let's take a look at breach of implied contract. A small number of employees have contracts of employment that are negotiated, executed in writing, signed, and specify a particular term of employment. If an employee with an express contract is terminated prior to the expiration of the contract, the employer will be liable for damages for breach of contract unless the employer can show that there was cause to terminate. Most often, contractual disputes of this type are settled by negotiations between the parties. In contrast, the vast majority of employees do not have express contracts of employment and are employed at will. Nevertheless, under the implied contract exception to employment at will, the right of employers to terminate at will can be limited by promises of job security. Even in the absence of an express contract of employment, written or oral statements by employers can give rise to enforceable contractual rights to something other than employment at will. This might be employment for a specified term or termination only for certain reasons. If an implied contract exists, discharged employees can sue for wrongful termination based on breach of the implied contract. Most statements made by employers, whether orally or in writing, are not contractually binding. However, the following factors point to the existence of an implied contract. A specified promise was made. The promise was made frequently and consistently. The source of the promise was someone with sufficient authority to offer it. The promise was communicated to the employee. The promise was not highly conditional. The employer's course of conduct was consistent with the promise. There was an exhaustive list of dischargeable offenses in a handbook. A change to the less protective policy was not communicated to employees. There was no effective disclaimer. Statements such as, you have a promising future with the company, or you will have a job here as long as we are pleased with you, do not evidence intent to depart from an employment at will and are unlikely to be enforceable. Listings of dischargeable offenses can limit employment at will if they can fairly be read to restrict terminations to those based on the stated set of reasons. To understand whether a promise was made, some courts look not only at statements spoken by managers or written documents, but also to the entire course of an employer's conduct. The course of conduct relevant to determining the existence of an implied contract includes the employer's informal policies, past practice, industry customs, and treatment of the individual employee. However, although consistent raises, promotions, and positive performance appraisals can bolster an employee's claim that employment is not strictly at will, they do not themselves constitute contractual guarantee of future employment security. Specific promises made to employees regarding their term of employment, permissible reasons for termination, or termination procedures must be honored. Because they're often cited by plaintiffs as sources of implied contracts, Handbooks, application forms, and other job offer letters or communications should be carefully written and vetted by people with legal expertise before they're put into use. If changes are made that lessen employees' rights not to be terminated at will, employees should be clearly informed of these specific changes.